Excuse me. That's fine. Is that a, a cup full of uh, mushroom poop? No, <laughs> not this time. <laughs> not this time. That's that's later. <coughs> that's for the party. Hello, uh, Dr. Tom Volk. We're honored to have you here at the Encyclopedia Show on fungus. I, I guess we'll just start off right out right out the gate. You know, you're a you're a fungal expert. You you do all of your professional work on uh, you you work on mycology and medicinal mycology as well. Correct. Medical mycology. Yeah, yeah, medical mycology. That's different. And mycology is the study of fungus, correct? That's right. Yeah, see, I, I read a book um, called Wikipedia. Now, uh, I, uh, I'm wondering, just off the bat, uh, how integral fungus is to our daily lives, both commercially and biologically, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, so there's, there's, there are fungi everywhere. Uh, they uh, are in the trees, on the trees, and they help the, all the trees grow. So anything that that has a tree or a plant, uh, has a fungus associated with it, at least one, sometimes 50 or 100 different species with one tree. Uh, there are citric acid and our colas all come from a fungus. They, they come from uh, a fungus. They don't, yes. people aren't squeezing the skins of orange, oranges no, to get they're, that. They're not doing that. They, they're taking a vat the size of this room and filling it with corn, and they're adding a fungus called Aspergillus niger to it. And then the, they're draining the waste products from the fungus out of the bottom of the, of the huge vat, and that be what goes in our Coke. So, the, <laughs> so the, the mushroom poop is why our Coke is brown? Uh, no, not exactly. It's a, <laughs> I, I think I know what I'm talking could, about, Dr. Volk. It could be. <laughs> so you said that uh, each species of tree has at least one fungus associated with it, and, and sometimes up to 100 in order yep. for that tree to exist, that this fungus also has to exist. That's right. What does that mean? Is it, like a, is it like a little mushroom man on top who's like sweeping the leaves and like picking off dangerous bugs and things like that? Or what happens? That would be fun. That would be. But, but these are intimately associated with the roots and uh, they get sugars from the tree. And in return, they provide the tree with um, minerals like uh, nitrogen and potassium and phosphorus. And they help to absorb water by increasing the surface area. And so there would be no plants on land without fungi. So there's significant evidence that they moved on to land at the same time. So they they they, they transported together. They they both went, went right. <laughs> when they evolved. Uh, that's kind of that's that's weird. That that that's not like a, our concept of a, a species doesn't usually have that sort of a helper attached to it. That's right. Some people would consider that the tree is actually the photosynthetic appendage of the fungus. The tree oh, is the photosynthetic appendage of the fungus. Yeah. You hear stories all the time about like these families that were staying in the woods and they picked wild mushrooms and everyone died horribly over the course of three hours while their insides sort of like poured out of their faces. Um, <laughs> why is it that mushrooms can be so deadly to humans. So there's only really a few kinds of mushrooms that are really deadly poisonous. Uh, the death angels and a few other smaller ones that are less distinct. Mm -hmm. uh, the death angel has a toxin uh, that uh, called ammonitin and this is a small polypeptide. It's all amino acid residue so it's like a little protein. Uh, and it uh, gets into the uh, liver and destroys protein synthesis. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't make proteins in your liver, you can't make enzymes, you can't filter anything out, uh, you can't make new liver cells. And uh, after about 12 hours, the liver cells start to die. And that's when the symptoms show up for these death angels. Uh, and so you don't get anything happening until 12, 24 hours later. And by then, most of your liver has been destroyed by the time you have any symptoms. That's a... And so there are some experimental treatments, but it's mostly um, deadly um, and often requires a liver transplant. Like, like an instant liver transplant, right? Like... Well, pretty quick. You can be on you know, the liver machine for a while, uh, but it's, you know, it's got to happen pretty quick. Have people survived? Do you know people who survived the death people angel? Survived. People have survived it. Uh, most notably is one... A woman who survived it because she was an alcoholic 
and she had bad cirrhosis of the liver and that prevented the little liver from dying. That's incredible. <laughs> so we should all start drinking as much as possible right now to protect us from I, the death angels. I recommend it, especially if you have a liquor license there. Yeah, uh, we don't, but it's cool. No, no, no one comes to the show who's official. Uh, we do whatever we want. This is like international waters. We're like marrying horses up here. You know, you had a heart transplant. The, I did. The heart that, you, that is currently making you answer my questions is not the one you were born with. That is correct. Someone else is born with it. And you, you have your original heart in a jar, correct? I do. Is that it's weird? <laughs> And if we were if we were doing this interview in my office, I would just show you. But I we're in Florida now, so stupid Florida. I, I can't bring my heart in the carry on. They don't allow it. Well, we'll take a rain check. We'll take okay. a rain check. We'll, when we do our show on hearts, you can bring it and uh, we'll play with it. Oh, that'd be fun. And see what's growing in it. Um, so but as a result, then fungus has not played only an important role in your professional life, but in your personal life, it it sort of vacillates between this this thing that, that helps you and aids you and also threatens you and your, your, your continued existence using whatever heart you currently have. How has that affected your life, both professionally and in, in the work you do with fungus, but also personally in your approach to how you understand living and how you understand what it means to be a human? Oh, that's deep. That's super deep. Man, I get deep <laughs> on this show. Um, so after I had my transplant, I had to go on immunosuppressive drugs. Uh, to suppress my immune system so I wouldn't have rejection from of my new heart. And so one of those was cyclosporin, and that comes from a fungus that normally grows on an underground grub uh, and sends up this little spiky fruiting body. And so somehow someone discovered that that would suppress the immune system. And so that's the major, that was the major breakthrough in transplants with cyclosporin. Uh, the people were able to, to get new organs and not have rejection. Uh, since then, there have been other ones. I'm on another immunosuppressive drug called mycophenolate, which comes from a penicillium species. It comes from a mold. Uh, and so I take those daily and we'll take them forever. Um, but in, I also teach medical mycology and teach mycology. So I teach people about fungi and in general, and fungi infect people in various ways. So we have cultures of these fungi in the lab, uh, and we have to be very careful with them because if I inhale the wrong ones, uh, it will grow in my lungs and uh, you know, destroy me. Uh, so that's not not as not good. That's not a good plan. So yeah, how does that affect you then? How does that affect your approach to to medical mycology, and how does it affect your approach to living? Well, it's you know I'm very grateful to my heart donor, who I don't know who that is, uh, but. You know that I know that every day the old cliche that every day is a gift happens to be true. Who knew? Um, and so you know I don't worry about the little stuff anymore. It's the the big picture kind of things are what I worry about the most. And I, a lot of stuff that would have bothered me before doesn't bother me at all. So I guess in general, if people regard fungus at all, I think they regard it uh, dubiously, and they 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 only hear the stories about the family all dying horribly um, and they only hear about fungal infections and they only hear about this, these funguses that are killing the, the frogs and the bananas. So what are the redemptive things about fungus? I mean, obviously they, they take care of trees and they take, they're in our antibiotics, but what is it about them that is, uh, is, is very beneficial, if not essential to our existence? Birth control pills. Birth control pills? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, the steroids and the birth control pills come from a fungus. What a gift. Yes. I, I have a lot of people to thank then. I have a lot of funguses to thank. Just kidding. I don't, I don't have sex. Um, slime mold is a fungus, right? No. No. We dumped, we dumped them out of the fungal kingdom. Really? Slime molds are giant amoebae. They're what? Yeah. They're, they're, are they multi-celled? No. They're, they're, so you have a slime mold that might be the size of you know two or three feet across, and it's a single cell. Well... That uh, then my next question is completely irrelevant. <laughs> speaking of speaking of LSD, uh, so psilocybin is that the psychedelic mushrooms? Right. So uh, psilocybin is the name of the of the mushroom, or psilocybin, however you want to pronounce it. Is that the only one that is psychedelic to humans? If no, are? there are uh, the Ammonite muscaria, uh, fly agaric, is also hallucinogenic, but in a totally different way. A totally different way. It's more violent, whereas the 
the psilocybin is it's much more mellow. It makes you play drums more. Something like that, I think. Yeah. Uh, so that's fascinating. If you take one mushroom, are they, are they both healthy? Like, can you, are they, they, nothing happens to you besides? Uh, there, there's no reported deaths from them, from the toxins, but some people do stupid things when they're under the influence and that may lead to problems. Like they buy a lot of stuff on QVC or take out a boat loan when they can't really afford a boat. They, it says right on the package not to do any financial things when you're on these drugs. This is very smart. This is very smart. But that, that is interesting that, that one is very violent. It makes you, you, you see like crazy things like, like, um, supposedly the Vikings took, uh, this violent one before they went into battle. Um, and that made them very fierce. So that's where maybe where their fierce reputation came from. The Vikings took the, the Am 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 Amanitas. Yeah, and they're they're like they're freaking out and they're like I'm 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 killing this giant toad. That's exactly right. The, one of the one of the uh, symptoms is macropsia, which means you see things larger than they are. So your analogy to the giant giant toad is exactly right. So they saw they saw the villagers were huge and they attacked. Uh, so <laughs> that's incredible. That's the best thing I've ever heard. Ever. Ever. <laughs> I, um, see, the, I I've had a very yeah. sheltered life. It's also possible that the Santa Claus myth came from the same mushroom. What, so, some fat guy was walking around with a big bag and people were like, oh my God, he's the most jolly man I've ever seen. Well, I don't, I don't know exactly that, but the, if you think about Santa Claus is red with the white dots on him and so is Amanita muscaria, the flag Eric. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, the reindeer eat these mushrooms and they get high. And so the reindeer are flying around and, you know, there's elves making toys and things like that. That does sound like a big trip. It does sound like <laughs> Do you think all the lies our parents told us are just basically psychedelic mushroom based? I think so. You could be anything you want. And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, you're going to be an astronaut, <laughs> honey. Um, that's great. Uh, well, Dr. Tom Volk, I'm so glad we got to have this conversation today. It was really enlightening. And, and uh, the work you're doing is just incredible. So thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Great.